Hey guys, I pray you're blessed today. I want to get out here and talk about what is happening right now in the United States. You know, we look around and we see utter chaos. There is utter chaos happening all around us and our nation is more divided than it has ever been. And we look at what's happening in Texas right now and I can't help but think and believe that it's a distraction. You know, I watched a video last night about a man at, he was driving down by, by the um, border and Gary from Gator 1111 talked about this this morning too. But in this video, this man is driving down the border fence and he's talking about how we're all being lied to and deceived. And he starts to, he starts showing the, the fencing. And there's one section of the fence that is heavily guarded. It's got a, it's got a fairly large military presence at it. You know, the National Guard's there. There's Humvees. They've got, they've got some major firepower. They are patrolling the area. And so that section is like it's stated, that's being stated everywhere. But then he drives down a little bit further and there's another opening, another um, area to come in. The gate's wide open and nobody's patrolling that area. There's no military presence. Nobody's watching it. Nobody's patrolling it. It's just wide open for whoever. Then he drives in a little bit farther and there's yet another entryway and it's not even got a gate on it and of course there's nobody guarding that section either. So he says we're all being lied and deceived to and he believes we're being lied and deceived to to start a civil war but between us, between people who believe and see things differently that they're wanting to start a, to raise up tensions within our nation between between the people and I'm not saying that that's true I don't know how it looks like in Texas I'm in Tennessee so I have no clue how it looks like in Texas so I'm not gonna say what's happening is is a lie do I believe it's a distraction oh yes I definitely believe it's a distraction I believe it's a tactic look here not there and right now our enemies are salivating at the mouth to see what is happening we have North Korea, we have China, we have Russia, we have all of our Middle Eastern enemies. They're all foaming at the mouth because we are in utter turmoil within our own borders. And what better time than when a nation is in chaos within itself to attack. You know, when we're already stretched thin, we have a lot of our military is over in the Middle East. We have some over near Taiwan. We have some, I believe, still in Ukraine. I'm not for sure about that. I don't want to quote that. But we are stretched thin. And then I seen from Lisa Boyce that today that our Navy is hard up for some sailors. They are at an all time low. They've not met their their quota for in for enrollment and they've actually lowered th their standards. They're you no longer have to have a high school diploma and you no longer have to have a GED. You can actually take the test that you have to take to be even qualified to be a sailor and only pass it with a 50. 50 out of 99. That's kind of scary. You know, and then we and then another thought came to me, and I think Lisa boy um I think Lisa brought it up too. My mind went to, well, what about these illegals? Are they gonna start allowing illegals to be in our military because of the fact that we're so hard up for military presence? And it's like, oh dear God, you know, it's like all these things. But guys, we who are in Christ, we don't fear. We don't fear this world is not our home. No matter what happens here, this world is not our home. This is not our permanent dwelling. 
Thank God it's not. Because it is going to the dogs. It is a train wreck. You know, when you can't help but just come. Just come. My mom was talking the other day and she was, isn't there a scripture where the saints will actually pray for the Lord to come back? But I, I believe that's during the tribulation that they start praying that the Lord will actually come back. I could be wrong, but I know a lot of us now are praying, Lord, please come back. But you see, our God is a loving and gracious God. And His desire is for no man to perish. And so He is long-suffering. And while we're waiting, while we're waiting, and our, Lord, our God, Lord, and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come in raptures, our blessed hope, we have to occupy the time. We have to redeem it. We have to witness to the lost. Be encouragement to the brethren who are discouraged. And I'm, I'm going to be the first to say, I have been discouraged here lately. I have never seen a time where so many people are going through something. So many of God's people are going through something, whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, financial, relational, whatever it is, everybody is going through something. You know, mine has been, I have been attacked with grief here lately, guys. I'm not going to lie. And I can't shake it. I can't do this. I know it's in God's hands. You know, and it's like the enemy has been trying to, to get me to idolize my husband. And I'm not doing that. My husband was a good man. He was a wonderful husband, a wonderful provider, my best friend. But you know what? He was not my savior. He did not die for me on that cross. He did not shed his innocent blood so I could be forgiven of my sins. He could not be that be that bridge that that I can't even think he could not bring me back into a right relationship with God he couldn't because he was a man pure and simple blood and flesh Nothing divine about him. 100% man. 100% imperfect. That was my Anthony. That's all of us. None of us are perfect. And we're, we're going to fall. We're going to do things we shouldn't do. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. No matter what you're going through, don't set up. your problems higher than God. I know that God is the only one who's going to get me through this. My husband cannot comfort me. He cannot be here for me. Do I wish he was? In some regards, yes, I do. Would I ask God to bring him back? No. No. Even though it hurts, I would never ask God to bring him back. He's got it made. He's home. He's where we all long to be. We've all got loved ones there waiting on us. But this is not about Anthony. What I'm saying is the enemy has been trying to amplify my grief. Get me to focus on the grief and not on God. Not on Jesus. Satan will amplify what you're going through and make it seem bigger than God. We all know that nothing that we go through is bigger than him. There is nothing that we can go through that is bigger than him. We have got to keep our eyes on the Lord. 
because Satan is prowling like a lion seeking who he can devour. Now is not a time to give up. Now is not a time to go back into the world. Nothing is worth your relationship with the Lord. I prize my relationship with the Lord more than anything, more than any other relationship that I have. Because I know without Jesus, I am nothing. I can do nothing. And I know that he will never leave us. And he will never forsake us. You are his. Nothing can separate you from him. You know, if you don't know Jesus, you're missing out on the best, best thing you could ever have in your life. And that's that beautiful, personal relationship with Jesus. I talk to him just like I'm talking to you. I talk to him, even if it's to say, I love you, Lord, or thank you. Thank you. Jesus died on the cross, just like it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, and on the third day, he rose again. That is the gospel. You place your faith in him. Place your faith in his completed work on the cross. That his blood was that atonement for your sins. So you could be forgiven of those sins. And know that it's nothing within yourself that can save you. Not your works. Nothing can save you but that blood that Jesus shed on the cross for your sins. Jesus died so we could be brought back into a right relationship with God. Because of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, from that original sin, sin entered the world, and because of sin, the punishment is death. But even if we die who are found in Christ, if we die we truly don't die. We're only going to see one death if we do die before the Lord comes. We won't taste of the second death, which is a spiritual death. There's a physical death and a spiritual death. If you're not in that relationship with Jesus, you are spiritually dead and destined for hell. But the moment you receive that free gift of salvation, the free gift, you can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's a free gift given to you from God. So that none of us can boast. Once you receive that free gift, your destination has changed. And you no longer will face that second death. You will only taste of one death. And some of us won't even taste of death at all. Because we'll be raptured before we die. I want to be counted in that number. But the beauty of it is, when we're found in Christ, we don't need to fear death. Because we know to live is Christ, to die is gain. We know where our home is at. And this world is not our home. And I wanted to read, and I know I've read this before, but I want it to read it again. And that is in John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, 
We do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the only way to the Father is through Jesus. Only way to heaven is through Jesus. There is no other way. The universe cannot save you. You cannot save yourself. Muhammad, Allah, Gandhi, Buddha, all of these, they cannot save you. Jesus and Jesus alone. You know, so let's keep our eyes on Jesus. No matter what we're going through, allow the Lord to touch you. And I'm talking to myself too. Allow the Lord to heal you, to touch you. Allow him to be for, there for you with wherever you're going through. And like I said in that other video, lay your Isaacs down. What are you holding on to that you need to let go of? What are you not giving to the Lord that you need to lay down and say, Okay, Lord, here it is. You know, He wants to radically change your life. But He only can if you allow Him to. You know, when I got saved, I was heavily addicted to pornography. And the Lord completely took that desire away from me other things took a little time you know it was the sanctification process and we'll go through that sanctification process until we die or we're raptured and we're put in our glorified bodies our, our bodies are changed and glorified we will never stop that sanctification process until we go home when you come to Christ you're justified you're made righteous in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ. During our walk with the Lord, we are sanctified. We are brought from glory to glory to glory. He pulls things out of us. And we, we grow closer and closer to Him. Our relationship gets stronger and stronger with Him. But you have to allow Him to do that. You have to allow Him. You have to let go of these things that are burning you down. And believe me, the Lord, he'll, he'll convict you. The Holy Spirit will convict you. And you'll know when you're doing something you shouldn't do it. Or if there's something that, that you're refusing to let go of. Is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? You know, none of us are perfect. I'm not. None of us are perfect. And we're all going to fall. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. We're all sadly going to mess up because we are in these sinful bodies we have not when we get saved we do not discard this sin nature sadly it is with us until we go home this is why our bodies have to be glorified because sin cannot enter into heaven our spirits are sealed but these bodies they're sinful they're fleshly they have to be glorified. They have to be changed. All right. But I feel like I'm rambling, so I'm going to go ahead and get off here. But seriously, guys, don't let the things that are happening in this world distract you or scare you. You know, I'm not saying that this is a deception. Do I believe there's a level of deception? Yeah. Do I believe that we're being lied to on a daily basis about everything? But don't let these things that you see going on trouble you. Keep your eyes on Jesus and know that Jesus has got you. He's got us. And soon and very soon, we're going home. And we won't have to worry about this maddening world anymore. They can have it. And while we're still here, we're going to pray for our loved ones. We're going to trust God that he is going to save them. Only he can. We can't save them. Believe me, if I could take an iron skillet and just smack my family in the head with it, tell them to get right, I would. But all that's going to do is more than likely they're going to press charges against me. <laughs> Don't stress about the things you can't change. 
can't change your family. You can't make them accept Christ. And sadly, we know that not everyone is. Do we want to think about our loved ones not accepting Christ? No, we don't. We don't want to think about that. But we also have to remember we're dealing with people who have a free will. But we also know that we have a supernatural God who knows how to woo us and he will never stop pursuing us. I mean, look at the lengths he went for for us. I'm sure some of you all got some amazing testimonies. But anyways, I love you guys. Keep looking up and don't get discouraged. I know it's hard not to get discouraged. But we're going to make it through this. And we're going to make it through this together. If you have any prayer requests, put them in the comment section. If you have any anything you you don't wish to air out and you want to you want to get it off your chest but you don't want everyone knowing please email me you're it's a safe place i promise you i won't ever talk about it on here but please know that i am praying for you and that i love you dearly you all mean the world to me you're my brothers and sisters and we're going to spend eternity with each other so just keep looking up okay don't give in, don't give up, and don't quit. I love you all. God bless you all, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.